Hey guys, welcome back to Beards of War. We're at it again, reviewing another movie. It's a current one, which is great. Uh, so this one is Bad Boys 2 or 3 or 4, I forget, but it's Ride or Die. Uh, so, of course, you got Marcus. It's four. There we go. You got Marcus, right? That's back in it. Marcus Burnett, which is Will Smith, or is that Martin Lawrence? That's Martin Lawrence. Mm -hmm. And then you got my favorite name of ever, Mike Lowry. Mike Lowry. So Mike Lowry is back in it. Of course, they had to have the, the two main guys back in it. But essentially, you know, it's kind of like the other bad boys, and there's a lot of action, a lot of things going on. You know, they got captain howard in it of course and you know it's it's all over the place with regards to the action uh kind of the storyline and you know essentially you know he's being uh captain howard was framed as working with some people that he shouldn't have been working with and both you know the bad boys are out to try and clear his name right he's He's kind of wound up in this whole thing. And of course, they do what they do best, which is guns, violence, speed, all that good stuff. Um, but all in all, it, it's a it's an interesting flick. And I think for those who like that franchise, they might be interested in, in checking this one out. But they, you know, they go out to, to kind of clear his name, as I said before. And, you know, I guess if I could say there's one spoiler, they may or may not win the day, right? um in true bad boys fashion but before we get into this i'd like to move over to our sponsor hey guys fat broken rambo from beards of war today's video is sponsored by roan industries a better known company that strives to produce better gear for better operators they design products with only necessary moving parts no excess fluff and simple functionality so the next time you're at the checkout section over at roan be sure to put bow in all caps and to get a 15 percent discount from us to you all right thanks and back to the video we got two suspects, Lowry and Burnett. They're armed and dangerous. In five, four, three. No! It's the way for Rowan. It's flammable. I go there, scientist. All right, what's up, people? It's your boy, Thick Nick Fury. And then, as we talked about, we're going to do Bad Boys 4, Ride or Die. So this movie is currently in theaters. Uh, we don't want to spoil this for you, man. This movie, in my opinion, was uh, one of the best of the franchise. Um, uh, it was directed by Al Arby and Bilal Fala. Um, written Chris Bremer, Will Bill, George Gallo. Uh, key grips, as we always shout out our key grips. We got Kerry Rawlins and Brandon Cundiff. Uh, it's produced by Jerry Bruckheimer. Doug Belgrad kind of gets a postpartum shout out every time they make the Bad Boys movies, which I think is phenomenal. You got Chad Oman and Will Smith as producers. I uh, had a budget of 100 million. Uh, domestic opening was just over $56 million, global over 105. So they've already uh, kind of made their money back. So now it's time to, you know, see how much uh, on top of that we can actually get. Um, so just to get into the movie again, like, you know, if you follow the, the bad boys franchise, you kind of know about Mike and Marcus, right? Uh, the bad boys, the TNT um, at this stage of their life, um, as we know from the, from the previous bad boys, Marcus is already retired. Um, it may or may not be the case with Mike. We're not exactly sure if he's still in. doesn't seem like it. Cause I think in he this is, movie, he's got a badge. Do I? I, I saw a sequence where he walked into like the FBI meeting and I'm pretty sure he had a badge on his hip. So I think, I think Will Smith still is still in. in. All right. So I guess they do have like 60 year old cops, but Ooh. I mean, you know, yeah, whatever. I mean, it's, it's Mike Lowry, you know, whatever. Right. So, um, uh, it's My basically, God. it follows, uh, as uh, Chris was saying earlier, Captain Howard has been framed. Um, after his death, he's been framed for working with the cartel. And of course, uh, you know, bad boys, we're not buying it. There's no way Captain Howard was dirty. Uh, so the movie, the premise of the movie is to clear his name and an attachment, their own name. Because he's, as you know, once you're in, you, you know, you kind of get caught up. In, and they basic, they're basically on the run for this movie. And I will tell you, like, as far as cop movies go, buddy cop movies, this is like, this is the duo. It's Mike and Marcus. You know, you got, you got Murtaugh, you got Riggs from Lethal Weapon. They're the best, and, by the you way. know, you got Case and Hammond from 48 Hours. You know, Star there's a few out there. You know, shout out to Jackie Chan. Ted and Mark Wahlberg. Oh. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Chips. Oh, but, dude. But oh. Estrada. <laughs> This movie is full of little Easter eggs. Um, again, if you follow the franchise, you'll pick up on a lot of them. Um, you got some 
you know, you get, you got your, you know, your cameos from previous, you know, uh, directors in there, you know, a little shout out to the Porsche 911, uh, you know, a couple of YouTubers, you know, you'll see people that you recognize some, you know, some rappers, you'll see some other actresses and all that stuff. So it's just a good, fun, action filled movie. Um, Eric Dane plays the, plays the villain. And, uh, I think he does a phenomenal job as a villain. Uh, this movie, um, it kind of it gives you a good perspective of how you can give give some some honor to your your past and kind of bring it along and watching character development and that's key in this character development some characters you know they they grow and they they fly man they leave that nest <laughs> and they turn into an eagle all a right bird i'm not going to spoil that for you but there there's there's a character that flies flies in this movie okay easily worth the price of admission <laughs> easily whatever that is at this point thirty dollars i don't know I i've mean, already seen it twice yeah um <laughs> so uh i don't know man i don't know where to start. i'll start from the beginning man like you know yeah let's as, do it, man. as in the other bad boys movies you know they always start out they're, they're going somewhere right okay they end up at a store hey man i just i just want to stop by the store right just stop by the <laughs> store i just want to get dogs. something real quick i want a ginger ale he's like man we don't have time so you don't know where they're going at that point and of course, you know, Marcus gets out and gets into the store and just it just can't be easy. Guy he gets held up in the store and then, you know, Mike hey, comes these dogs fresh. Like, Man, we, we don't have time, right? <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Are those dogs fresh? You know, so it was like Let me get it's that just, one. It's <laughs> just right. It's like put some relish on that motherfucker. <laughs> the most wrinkled one, that one. Yes, I want oh, that one. Nasty as hell. <laughs> so it's just and it, it just it takes you right back into uh, you know, those two guys doing what they do. And of course, you know, they, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, take this guy out real quick and just go on about our business. Tell the guy, the clerk, yeah, call it, call 911. Okay. I got a shot guy in my lobby and you just want me to call the cops. Like, what is that? And that's it. That's, that's just how bad boys roll, bro. They come in, take care of business and they're on their way. So as we find out later, they're on the way to a wedding. So tell them about the wedding there a little bit. That's right. Will Smith is getting married. Um, he's actually getting married to not Rita. Um, the not potential. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, um, too soon. <laughs> she's not getting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's an open Damn. whatever it is. We're gonna get sued now. Thanks. No, he got entangled right. in this movie. So he's not hooking up with the the previous love interest from the third one. I know they were exes in that one, but hey, whatever. She's moving on to Mister Fantastic. Uh, you'll get the reference if you can look at IMDb. Anyways, uh, so Will Smith is marrying his, his therapist that's helped him get through and grow some of the, you know, through, through his, I don't know, maturity. He's trying to be mature. Uh, so he's settling down at probably in his 50s, close to retirement. But hey, man, good for him. Happy for the guy. Um, it's a long road. Uh, Michael Bay cameos in that sequence is pretty good. And then we'll get to see uh, Reggie, who is a uh, decently decorated U.S. Marine. So uh, shout out to good old Reggie Semper Fi. I know he's an actor. I know he's a character in a movie. I don't give a shit. Um, and anyways, and then we start moving the plot for it's kind of like an introduction to the characters, uh, bringing them everybody kind of up to speed on where they're at. Uh, it was a nice touch at the ceremony. There's a frame of Captain Howard played by Joe Pantliano, uh, absolutely fantastic actor. I've loved him since the '80s. Um, anyways. I love the, the, the like subtle nuances of tying characters back into this. And I got to give it out to the writing. I know I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but I love when you can take um, like small tidbits in a previous installment and feed the narrative through. And I think this one did a really good job of doing that because they even do kind of like some callbacks to um, the second one, if I remember right. correctly, and they start talking yeah. about some of their case history. Even the first one. Yeah. Even the first yeah. one, like the scenes you see it, like, mm -hmm. And when you see it, it's like, oh, like it's almost it's like nice. watching it again yeah, for the first time. Touch. Like, you know, the first in the first Bad Boys, you had the scene where Marcus is about to get run over by the car and Will Smith runs up and, and you know, tackles him out of the way. And they have the slow moment where they both stand up and look, you know, all winded and everything. So in this one, it was the opposite. So now with Marcus, you know, saving Mike and they do the same thing where they both come up and looking like, you know, to just beat, but I mean, that throwback was one of those nice little Easter eggs that was like, yeah. man, I just, this, it was enjoyable, right? And you pick it up because you're so familiar with the franchise and how they are with each other and they're always there. And it's like, dude, you know, whenever you think it's, it's, it's over, your buddy's gonna come like ride a die. Even that, know? like that catchy, like guitar riff that they've played through all of them, like that, they made a comeback. And I was like, man, mm -hmm. it's like we're back in the universe again. And it was just mm -hmm. like, it was great. Yeah. I loved yeah. it. Yeah, it looked like, um, 
It looked like he was covered with uh, <laughs> when they when they were standing there doing that slow mo kind of a you know three sixty around them or whatever. It looked like he was covered in condiments, right, or paintballs. He had, he had like red, yellow, and blah, all over him. I'm assuming from the the condiments for the for the hot dog, but. Yeah, that happened that. before that scene. Actually, they were actually yeah, yeah, you're significant. That, yeah, 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 right. Yeah, that was a pretty <clears> significant <throat> gunfight uh, that led up to that. But you know, like I said, it's just yeah. them, you know, doing their thing. And Marcus, you know, has a life altering event. He has a, a widow maker at the uh, at the ceremony, and that kind of gives him a perspective. Obviously, he survives it, so no real spoiler there. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you it, know what? It gives does... him a different perspective. Yeah, does beg beg the question. I'm I'm gonna go there. Uh, there's been a lot of stuff out there about his uh, his health. Um, I don't know. Did he write in because of that conspiracy? Uh, I'll say he's come out and said, yeah, he, you know, nothing going on with him. But for me, like in, in the movie, it it not just the movie itself too. To include other content that's out there uh, about um, about Martin, like. I don't know. It looked like something's going on with his health. I read it as something's going on with his health uh, detrimentally because he he was talking the really, really slow. Like there were some health problems that were causing it. I'm not saying there is, but it looked like there might have been some health problems that caused him like to, I don't know, read or say his line super slow. He's doing the same thing in other content. And he just, he looks like he's had a hard life. I mean, you know, as Martin, the show was, uh, was a lot to work through, but um, yeah, I don't know what's going on with him, but I'll give it to him for making it through the whole movie because I know this wasn't, hey, let's just do one take and we're good. There had to be multiple takes, so he had to have energy. I don't know if it was five hour or if it was Red Bull or if it was just, you know, hey, he was motivated. But in any event, you know, I'll, I'll give it to him. He he acted. Um, hey, I wasn't I'll say super this, impressed. Man. The first Bad Boys in 95. I was a totally different person in 95 than I am now. Uh, I don't think I could film bad boys for at this point at 59. Definitely not. So he's got 10 years on me. So I I've got nothing to say about the dude's uh, health. Cause I don't know. Um, I mean, we can, you know, we can speculate on that and hopefully the man's fine. Like I, I don't yeah. wish anything bad on anybody, but um, his performance here was, was, was great. Like I, I felt like I was watching, you know, uh, the old Martin, you know what I'm saying? Uh, granted, it's a little different. You know, it's going to be a little bit different. Like we're all a little bit different. Um, but just his his lines, like he brought the he brought the comedy straight to the to the movie. You know, like Will Smith. Yeah, he had his parts, but it's mainly Martin with all the comedy. You know, <laughs> but it was it was just fun to watch, man. Watch those two guys together and interact and all that stuff. And it, it took me right back. Like I said, it took me back to the original Bad Boys, and it was just you know a fun. You know, there were no lulls. There's no like, oh man, this is boring. Like, where are we going with the story? It was like action throughout. No, yeah, definitely. I, I, I gotta say, man. I mean, for me, I think Martin. I didn't say he carried the movie. I think Will Smith did a good job because I I was on the fence about seeing a Will Smith movie after the whole Chris Rock thing, right? When he bitch slapped him, you know, in front of the world. Um, where was Chris Rock in this anyway? At the end of the day, like he, uh, I think Martin Lawrence did a fantastic job. Um, yeah, he's 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 an older guy. We're all older guys, man. Like, yeah. I didn't expect to look like this at forty four, and here I am. Yay! Um, I think he did. I think he did a really good job. So for me, going into this, not really being on Team Will Smith anymore, um, I needed Martin Lawrence to be there for this movie, and he and I think he showed up well. And I think all the comedy hit really well. Uh, his goofy ass staring into that fishbowl lens for that that hot dog <laughs> sequence just still cracks me up. I'm just picturing it in my mind. It makes me laugh. Yeah. Um, and then I thought it, I thought it turned around my attitude towards Will Smith too, man. Like, hey, man, everybody makes mistakes. We're all deserving of forgiveness. So, um, I'm glad to see he's he's regaling in some success again. So, just, yeah, yeah, I um, don't fuck it. Up. I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm a <clears throat> I'm a little further down the opposite end of that spectrum on that. Um, I thought you know, given you know the the stuff that I've loved from Martin Lawrence for. I don't know. It feels like way more than fifty something years. It feels like a hundred years because I loved all of his older stuff. Um, I'm not necessarily going to give him a buy on age, only because I've seen other people that are actors that have done stuff um, in their late ages, and they still they didn't seem to take that big of a hit with regards to doing their lines and things like that. And his comedy for me was lackluster at best. I didn't. I, I only laughed at maybe a couple of parts, and really. There's um there's one particular scene which I'm not going to cover that 
if anything, stole the movie for me was that scene. Uh, but you you guys go check it out, man. It's, I think it's worth it to check it out for the one scene that I'm not going to mention. Um, <clears throat> that that stole it for me. Yeah, same here. Uh, Will Smith's, you know, uh, history with uh, with Chris Rock or whatever that kind of, you know, did it did him in for me. Um, had it not been for all you great guys and gals out there supporting us, um, who knows how I would have felt about going to go see the movie in the, in the first place. But I wasn't impressed. I, I thought that they just they did an OK job at best. And like I said, the comedy wasn't there for me. There was lots of action and guns and stuff, but it just didn't feel the same. I mean, if you look at what uh, Murtaugh and Riggs or whatever, and they're, even in their later ones, when they got older. Danny Glover and so like he still Danny Glover in his older um, age, he still had more energy and could put his stuff together, you know, pretty dang going good uh, in comparison to Martin Lawrence on this. And so I would and I, I would imagine he was even older than Martin was when he did his last one of those. So, you know, cop duo type things in the action like that, that blows this, uh, this blow that blows this away for me. <clears throat> but all in all, there's some interesting pieces um, and it, uh, I would say go see it for the one scene that shall not be named. Um, but if it wasn't for that, I would say your money's probably better spent watching Garfield. But that's just me. He hasn't watched Garfield, so don't buy that either. <laughs> yeah, because I'm I'm smart. <laughs> we totally all went off the rail completely. Well, probably not <clears throat> Eric, but uh, you and I definitely did. Um, getting back to the movie, though. All right. Um, I absolutely loved it, man. Like I, I we can we can talk about differences in acting and all that kind of stuff. But I mean at the end of the day, I, I really enjoyed it. So it's a summer movie, lots of action, um, good villain, uh, and fantastic selection of an action set piece at the end. Like it's in a like a nature preserve aquarium where a giant albino alligator's at. And I was like, Man, if some motherfucker doesn't get eaten by that thing, I'm gonna be so mad. What a missed opportunity. And I wasn't disappointed. Um <laughs> And, and I will say this. And, and that so, sequence alone, man, it's in the trailer. He's like, that motherfucker's racist. <laughs> Mike, he's motherfucking racist. Like, dude, come on, man. That is Martin Lawrence gold. Right? That's one of the two pieces I laugh but, but, dude, like, <clears throat> honestly, the part I also thought was funny, it's like one of those minor details, right? They had to change their clothes twice on the run. And this is the like, there's almost a part of this the part that's in uh, one of the Austin Powers movies they they actually show oh yeah the people that they're gonna beat up and take their clothes are significantly larger or smaller than the main actors so whatever clothes they put on that just happened to fit them perfectly I don't know if you guys picked up on that but when they got the the clothes from the Red Decks yeah those clothes free them. The guys that are holding the guns, one's a fat dude, one's a skinny small super skinny, skinny dude. dude yeah actually, right but they fit it. them perfectly right so. And then at the at the other time after the cops' house, they're they're, they're they're partners. Oh yeah, thanks. They put on a shirt and everything just fits them perfectly, right? But that's just one of the Hollywood thing, right? So it, it's still funny. It's it's nothing that's gonna distract you from the movie. Uh, it's just one of those things I like to pick up on, like you know, always find a parking in front of the most busiest building in the city, you know, things like that. That's just you know typical of Hollywood. But um, you know, um, Will Smith's son from the from the third one comes back, and he's a major character in this uh, in this movie. Uh, his name is too, Armando. Man. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah awesome. the active Jacob Scipio. He, I think he did a great job, man. Um, I, I actually rewatched part three today uh, <laughs> just to prep for this. And I tell you what, man, I think that that dude is a force to reckon with. And I'd love to see him take off into some other action movies because I think he'd kick ass at it. Um, right, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes but, they get a start like this, you know. Um, and another small shout out. I don't know how many people know um, the rapper Jorno Lucas. Uh, he's like one of those uh, YouTube sensation kind of things. But, uh, he had made a, a salute video to Will Smith where he literally throughout the video played every one of Will Smith's characters. Like he was, he was Will Smith, the Fresh Prince, Will Smith, hmm. the Men in Black, I Am Legend, all the way through it. You could tell the guy was just a huge fan of Will Smith and he ends up in this movie. That is like one of those, yes, I love that. I love the fact <laughs> that they recognized this kid. They gave him an opportunity to, to work with his idol. And that's one of those things like fly, dude. Yes, yes, you made it go. Like anything can happen. But, you know, like I said, man, when you come down to those Thundercats, uh, I'm just going to say those little Thundercats, man. Sometimes they grow up to be actual, you know, beasts out here. So for that scene, I'm just I'm just going to um, let you guys know that scene right there. If you do not stand up and applaud that scene, I don't know what you're doing here. But 
I, I, I know I'm there's another YouTube great. guy that, that was in there that people will probably recognize. That was kind of a, I thought that was kind of cool that they had yeah. another YouTube personality right. or social media platform, dude. Yeah. If I you was know like, the oh hands. my God, not that dude. That's hilarious. <laughs> so that was another part that I kind of laughed at from the perspective of did not expect that. That was a, a welcome surprise for me. Um, that there was no way I could have prepared and, and known that he was going to pop up in there, but that was pretty funny out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, and so, for um, everybody else that's interested in and who's a Grey's Anatomy fan, um, I think his name is Sloan. Yeah, Eric Sloan's Daniel. the bad guy. Yeah, so come out and watch him get his ass beat. <laughs> yeah, I, I I just don't see yeah, him as a bad fantastic. guy. I thought he was great. I you was like, like all I could see was like a doctor from one of the TV shows. I was like, yeah, no, not not you're not. Fan of so me, I've dude. kind of watched that show a little bit, not really by choice. Um, and I don't ever take him as a doctor, so seeing him as a bad guy, that was pretty simple for me. Right, yeah. I mean, he he definitely fit the bill. Like, you know, I thought he was pretty good, yeah. Swag. Yeah, yeah, you know, like I like this, you know, I like villains with, with swag. Um, he definitely had that very calm demeanor. You know, he wasn't like, you know, uh, out of control like a psychopath, you know. He had intent, you know. And I like yeah. that. I like those cool, calm, collected villains who have a you know, a bigger thing in mind than, oh man, let's just shoot him. Oh no, we don't, we don't need more bad cop, you know, dead cops. Like, so, you know, he had a plan, uh, obviously it didn't work out because he's going up against the bad boys. Um, but yeah, you got, you got John Sally character, Fletcher, you know, he comes back. That was great. Uh, to back again. You know, coat bottle glasses and all that stuff. So like that stuff is what I love, man. I just love like going back, you know, reaching back to those past <laughs> movies and pulling those characters back with you. Um, there was a shout out to the, um, to the other two guys, uh, what, Reyes and, and Sanchez, yes. right? Uh, I mean, unfortunately, they they, they had a, a worse uh, outcome, but you still you still reach back and you reference them, right? You bring them. Yeah, it's cool to turn that off, though. Right. So I thought it was well done. Like I said, the story's yeah. well done. Um, the 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 daughter of Captain uh, Howard, uh, she's a U.S. Marshal, and of course, she's in on the case, which I never understood. Like even with Beekeeper. You're too close to the case. Why are you working a case? How are you the lead agent on a case involving your loved one? Like, it just doesn't really happen. Maybe it does. I don't know. But in Hollywood, it, I guess it does happen. But yeah. um, her character, you know, of course, you get that moment at the end where you have a decision to make. And the heart wants what the heart wants. <laughs> we saw that shit coming a mile away. <laughs> right? Come like, on. Oh, even the setup. Here. The random granddaughter showing up at Will Smith's wife's house in the middle of the night. <laughs> right. She's going to avoid answering the phone. I wonder why. Maybe this is a plot MacGuffin or some exactly. shit. Exactly. Like Dude, I'm thinking Men in Black 2. When he, like, what is it? No, the first one. Like, did you, uh, can you tell me why you felt little Tiffany needed to die? Well, she's the only one to seem dangerous. <laughs> little white girl in the middle of the ghetto, kind of physics books. <laughs> I would have shot her. She showed up in my house in the middle of the night, this pale white girl. Is that the back door? I'm like, oh no, you're getting shot. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but uh, so that kind of leads into you know the whole thing of protecting the nest, and um, uh, like I said, man, we don't want to spoil it too much for you guys, but uh, that movie it was it was a lot of fun. It was just it's action packed. Again, you know, suspend reality. Don't go in there looking for realism. Don't go in there looking like oh well, how many how many times did you shoot a gun? Like don't just just don't. You're not going to enjoy it like you would most action movies. Like they're outside of reality. Um, but I felt like the timing was good. The ending, uh, ending was great. You know, another you know kind of shout out to to uh, uh, Bad Boys. You know, in the past, and it was just it was just a fun movie to watch, man. And I literally stayed throughout the whole credits, even though there's no end credit scene. And it just it was it was a good ride. A I'll good say. Ride. Yeah, I'm going to have to <clears throat> agree with you 100% on that, dude. Um, bar none, well, minus that one scene, um, you know, the, my, that was my favorite part, the ending. The ending was my favorite part because it ended and I could leave. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, hey, Martin, get your money, bro. I nothing against that. Uh, but, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure yeah, there's some other money. weird... Disney they're getting their money and could've... Furiosa's money and Fall Guys money and <laughs> yeah, I'm like there the there could have been some other Disney movie I I could have watched that would have been better. I'm sure, like I don't know. I will say, man, Avatar I'm gonna get one... Twelve. 
more on a positivity, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How about some cinematography, man? Because if we don't talk about that action sequence with the camera work at the <clears> end, <throat> like I think it's a missed opportunity and I'll take it real quick. Absolutely. And at least how I kind of saw it was, I loved how they used, um, I believe it was drone footage to get like the stairwell, like when the, the reconnaissance drones kind of came in to the location at the end and they ran up the stairwell and they were actually filming it. I think it was from the perspective of the drones. And I thought that was some kick ass filming. I will say this. Uh, I got, I was like slightly wondering if my, <laughs> my vertigo was going to kick in. Cause it was a trip <laughs> to, uh, to kind of like follow the camera that fast and that many different angles. That was cool as hell. And when the the bullets start firing, and you guys have probably seen some of the behind the scenes footages of of Will and Martin wearing that um you know that um, first perspective uh, sorry first perspective reversible camera system that they've got going on where it's shooting them in the face and also like out so that way when Will Smith's extending to get into his shot um, you're actually seeing his reaction and then the quick cuts get to uh, him taking out bad guys and then you got that more Hollywoodism scene where he throws the gun to Martin Lawrence's character and. You know, it's panning, following the gun, and then Martin Lawrence grips it and goes back to work kind of thing. Um, yeah. I love it, man. I love the ingenuity. And these directors <laughs> that are doing this movie, um, this is only their third film so that, that, that I'm aware of. Um, I know they were – I think they were music video guys before this, and that's pretty common for action directors. Michael Bay started out that way, actually. Um, but these guys have only done Bad Boys 3. Then they did Batgirl for Warner Brothers, who is fucking everybody over on that deal and basically banning it from ever being released as a tax write-off. Who doesn't want to see Brendan Fraser as Firefly? Come on. Right? Jesus. Oh. It's not that hard. Free Brendan. Free Brendan. But, like, these guys, so these guys are relatively young to this game, man. Um, and I think they're some of the best, most top-notch directors that are out there right now. They, they're they fantastic, man. Um, yeah, that's what we need. New blood, man. Keep up that ingenuity. Like, it, it shines. I. To me, this movie is fantastic. Loved it. Yeah, I like the the setup, the, the that rig. <clears throat> and that's a new concept, right? Um, I, I I liked it, um, but of course, hey man, I, I I give you guys an unbiased and realistic review from my point of uh, my perspective. Um, it it was cool. I liked the way that uh, the, the camera moved around, faced Will Smith, and then face forward again. What? Made me not like that as much as I could have liked it as once he threw the gun to Martin. He threw the gun to Martin, and it looks cool on the trailer when you see it in the movie. Martin, yeah, it it is clumsy. I don't know if he just wasn't getting the choreography down very well, but he, it was a very slow kind of a press out. It just looks, it looked v- v- uh, very badly done on that end of it. But you know that the rest of that sequence I thought was really really cool, as well as the. Um, uh, the UAVs that they had playing around. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the tech crew and, or whatever they're called, the guys that manage all of that, like kudos and shout out to you guys. Cause you guys did a smoking job with being able to do that, film it, make all that, that happen. That was a lot. It had to be a lot of stuff that came together for all those electronics to, to work the way that they did probably multiple pieces of equipment. Um, so really cool. And that vest system was absolutely outstanding. I thought that was super cool. Yeah. So just, yeah. I appreciate what they were trying to do for moving the ball forward, man, on being creative. But, but regardless of how you feel about the movie, I mean, honestly, man, I'm just busting your chops a little bit, but I mean, like that, yeah, we all agree that that put in some love and some, some real brain power to come yeah. up with some really cool ideas like that. Yeah. Cool. I ideas, wouldn't have thought of this. Yep. No, I mean, maybe they're shit. I am not that smart. That that was some cool stuff, man. Oh, hey, but since we're talking about stunts real quick, you mind if mm-hmm. I chime in with one more thing? Of course. I don't know if you guys are tracking, man, but on um on the Instagram, the IG, um, there is there's a conversation happening right now at the Academy Awards where they're gonna start potentially entertaining the idea of stunt stunt personnel receiving Academy Awards. Oh yeah. Nice. It's about time. So it's it's, it's kinda cool, man. You know those stuntmen awesome. in the past are like, what now? Now. Right, like Jackie Chan alone is like what? I told you he's <laughs> going to win everything. Jackie's going to win all of them, just like, because of the like awards. Like, the, they have to backdate these awards. They're going to have to backdate for everybody. Yeah, because stunt stunt man. I mean, unfortunately, it's, it's a dying art, man. Um, I mean, these guys. I mean, granted, they're they're doing phenomenal work now, but a lot of it's CGI, and I think I just appreciate the those guys like putting their health Hell on yeah. the line. To, yeah. and, I mean, for for seconds of camera time right it's like you they're not even on camera long enough for you to see who they are you know what i mean it's like 
oh, okay, no, that's 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 the same actor, that's not the stuntman. So they do it well. The editing is done well. Um, like I said, I see grips. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, so let, let's get let's let's start rating this movie. Uh, I, I think we already know where you stand, Chris. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and go ahead go first. And yeah, uh, get too that, easy, get man. That sour taste out your mouth. I'll go ahead and knock it out. Actually, it's it's a bittersweet. It tastes it's good to me, man. I'm I'm gonna tell you right now, it's a ten minus five for me. So it's uh yeah, it's a five at best. Um, it hit middle ground at best, right? Uh, I, I think it was somewhat of a nostalgia slash money grab piece. The, you know, no more need to say it's you know to say on that the, the money piece, but. Um, it, it made its numbers right, which is, I guess, at the end of the day, one of the biggest things. I won't say it's the end all be all. Does it make the money? I think it, the really important piece to me is, you know, the audience and how they really feel. And it's, you know, it's a mixed bag. It might be heavier towards one side, but I thought that um, all in all, I wasn't impressed. I, I could have just watched, you know, one or two uh, over at the theaters and I would have been much, much happier just because of the scripting, the dialogue, the ability to, to run through it kind of, you know, kind of sucked in my opinion um, for such high quality, high caliber actors that have been around doing this for a little while. So that's my thought. All right. What you got? What you got? Fab broken Rambo. All right, man. Well, I'm going to go out on top. I I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, I was kind of crushed with Furiosa um, and crushed with fall guy. So like summer 2024 is, Kind of hasn't hit the mark just for me though, man. This is just my opinion. Um, it was nice. This, I was I was hesitant at first. The second trailer sold me though, and I was not let down. I I want. I told the guys when we were in the theater, I was like, man, I was like, I want to buy another ticket and go come back and see it. Like I was that jazzed, and I haven't been jazzed for for a movie like that in a long time. Um, it was nice. It was nice to be in the theater, watch the shit get blown up, and seeing two icons of Hollywood come back and do their thing, and and to me, still do it with fucking style and grace, man. So uh, I loved it. Hey, man, bring up Bad Boys 5. Do it. Make it. Um, recommend that you bring back Reggie and Armando and maybe the, uh, the two senior guys. They take more of a supporting role, like the old mentor or something like that. But keep it going, man. Bad Boys Generations. Hashtag whatever. Go for it. Do it. <laughs> what Love are you giving it? Go see it. What are you giving it? <laughs> uh, I'm going to give this an eight, man. Uh, like I said, totally loved it. Go see it. Sweet. Yeah. So, um, Again, this is me uh, loving the franchise. Uh, this movie, like I said, was just a culmination, a, a nice tight bow on this, man. Uh, the movie, it, it, it flowed, you know, right from three into four. So it wasn't like, uh, okay, where are we going with this? It, it was, you know, like so you're growing with these guys. Um, now you see you see Mike getting married. Mike is getting married. Mike, Mike Lowry is getting oh married, God. okay? And, and, and also watching them kind of flip, right? Because remember, Mike was always the... <laughs> The badass, you know, like reckless dude. Now it was it was Martin. Like after that epiphany, he's like, oh yeah, I can't die, you know. So he's like out there just going, oh, and, and Mike is trying to rein him in, right? Mike's like, dude, relax. And 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 Mike's having the panic attacks in the middle of the firefights, and like you you kind of see that role reversal, which I thought was another thing that was just a, an amazing piece of this movie. Um, you can't to me, you can never beat the original because the original is the one that starts it all. So I give this movie a nine. And I'm telling you guys, if you go see this movie, and all I'm going to say is protect the nest. You come back to the comments and you'll know what I'm saying. <laughs> Just come back. Tell us what you think. Tell us how you feel about the movie. Uh, if you want us to see more, do, do more movies like this. If you enjoy uh, us kind of giving more more spoiler or, or less, you know, let us know. Let us know. We're still trying to work this thing out. Uh, get it where it's, you know, tweaked for the best. And it can't please everybody, but this is how we do things here. So like I said, I gave it a nine. So that overall gives it a 7.33. It only repeats twice. Uh, now, where's that overall rating? How, how does that rate overall, guys? Do we know? That, that takes the cake from Violent Night. Yeah, yeah, just above Violent Night. It's above Violent Night. All right, so what is that? Four? It's number six. Number six. All right, number six out of our 17. Christmas right. in June doesn't work. Uh, you know, hey, hey, it, it works. It works. So, like I said, we, we'll have time to revisit some of these. Uh, but you guys, please let us know what you think in the comments. Um, again, I thought this movie was great, man. Uh, for a fourth installment, for a fourth installment, this movie was absolutely phenomenal. Um, so that that's all I got, guys. Uh, again, it's your boy, Sick Nick Fury from Bay of the War. Take it away, fellas. Chris, out. 
that broken <laughs> Jesus, I even fucked this up. <laughs> that broken Rambo out here.